afternoon folks at Ruriac Clodden Painting Studio here um, and this is the next part in the Box to Battlefield Hobby Basics series. I'm going to look at painting uh, techniques um, that we can use to continue painting um, our now primed uh, French Napoleonic Fusiliers in greatcoats. Um, so I've got some tools that will need in front of me. Um, I've got a dish with water, um, brushes from our cheap uh, pack um, plus a makeup brush, um, some paper towel below the models, um, and over here I have my palette. Um, this is a very simple but effective uh, DIY wet palette. I have a bit of kitchen sponge um, that's been soaked in water, uh, and I have some baking paper. Um, we can cover this over with the rest of the um, takeaway box sitting on the lid at the moment. Um, and that means between projects um, we can keep our, our paint wet and usable. Um, some of the water will seep through from um, the sponge through the baking paper and it keeps your paint um, wet for longer working time. Um, first technique we'll look at is overbrushing. Um, we're going to do that with the light grey which is going to be the colour of our great coats. And we'll take one of the larger cheap brushes. Um, we'll get a wee bit of water on there. And we'll thin out our paint a little. Now the idea with overbrushing is that we're gonna do quick strokes from uh, top, of the model down, top of the model down to the bottom and it's gonna leave more paint on the raised surfaces. And we've got something slightly lighter um, than the base coat and that means we'll get a bit of um, highlighting and shading into the bargain as well. Uh, probably a bit too much paint on the brush. We're not going for a totally dry brush but um, some uh, wet paint um, is removed and that leaves enough to work with. Now this is mainly the colour for the great coat but it's not going to matter a whole lot if it's getting on everything else at this stage. Um, it will help to add shadows and we can afford to be messy and do the tidying up later. So overbrushing is a really rapid uh, technique for quickly laying down paint and working with a colour that's slightly lighter than your uh, primer means you will just get um, a little bit of shading into the bargain as well. Um, I'm painting them four at a time um, means that by the time I've finished painting the last one the paint on the first model will be dry and ready for the next step um, and this is a good effective way to get through big units as well um, is to, to batch paint and do a few of them at once. So we have some um, off-white now I'm going to overbrush the packs. We'll overbrush the um, trousers. Uh, more correctly, overalls, if we're going to refer to them. In the Napoleonic sense. Okay, so that's an overview of overbrushing, um, a quick effective way to apply um, a lighter shade of paint um, over a darker primer um, to give you a little bit of shadowing. Um, we'll look a bit more at um, layering or um, putting down a, a base, blocking in, that's another way you've, people refer to it. Um, and sticking with the off-white, um, we've got some straps that we need to pick out. So with one of our, our smaller brushes, just got to try and be fairly neat when applying this to the strap areas, and across the chest, uh, over the shoulders. And mustn't forget musket straps. I 
So we'll do some more um, of this layering. Um, flesh tones, um, so Harry Painter tanned flesh, uh, face and hands. The um, shackles, uh, both the covered ones and uncovered here. Um, we'll cover them all in black grey. We use black grey on the boots, gaiters um, and cartridge packs along the back. Um, and the other bit of layering that we will do um, is to paint the musket stock um, hair and anything hanging from the belt in flat brown. Well, just before I put the brown away, um, a couple other details. Um, there is a strap running from right shoulder down over the front of the body. That's to the uh, gourds or flasks, whatever they're carrying on their waist. Um, the packs are made of cowhide. So you can paint that brown, um, black, um, or a sort of um, pattern um, of the two colours. So by doing that little bit of overbrushing white earlier, and we've just lightened it a little, so that if we have a fairly wet um, brown paint which we apply in patches, that's going to run in to some of those recessed, area, recessed areas that have been uh, sculpted for us. And leave slightly lighter patches towards the top um, and if you can avoid the straps that means you've done the pack because they are white so are the borders of the different panels so we're almost done um, with putting our um, base colors on um, I think a second layer in the flesh is needed. And then we'll break out the Prussian blue. We'll do the pom-poms, um, they're of company colours. Um, blue is one of those. Um, and also blue for this roll of um, material under there. That's actually their um, cap that they'd wear when they didn't have their shackle on. Another couple of techniques we'll employ. I'm going to use a bit of um, game colour elfic flesh um, to do some dry brushing. Now, dry brushing, it's a bit like overbrushing, and I've gone for the softer makeup brush for this. Um, we'll get some paint on the, the brush, but essentially we want to get our piece of um, dry kitchen towel and rub off as much of that paint as we can, until it almost seems like there's no, much, no paint left. We can test this on um, the base of the bottle cap, just to see where we're getting a little bit coming up there, but not too much. And we're going to target... Um, the raised edges of the um, model, so um, everything from um, shackle to skin to coat. Um, and this dry brush is just going to pick out a bit of um, extra detail that, on the sculpts and it acts as a, as a highlight. Really straightforward and simple way to bring up some of the detail in the model. So last bit of um, work to do before the wash is to get some metallics on there. I always like to leave metallics to the last um, and that is because the um, little metallic flakes that are in your paint uh, will contaminate your paint.
paint water, so you always need to clean that out. And it's usually a good idea to have a separate brush as well. So I've got some of the plate mail metal from Army Painter. Bayonet and musket barrel to pick out. A little bit of Vallejo brass now. Pick out the chin scales on the uncovered shackle, which have been clipped up out of the way. There's also a, pre, a plate on here. Um, some of our great coats have buttons. Um, depending on how expensive your great coat is, these could be brass, um, some sort of white metal, even wood or bone. Um, we'll just add a, a bit of brass to pick them out against the grey background. Okay, now I'm going to leave all these layers of paint to dry now for um, about 10 minutes and um, we'll come back and we'll do um, the next technique in the list which is a wash. So washes, what do they do? Um, it's going to flow into the recesses um, sculpted onto the model. Um, the areas between um, uh, different uh, items um, on these around about the folds in the cloth between the strap and the torso um, in and around the, the facial features <clears throat> it's going to leave a, um, a darker colour in the recess and um, to really um, sort of stress the shadows on the model um, so I'm painted dark tone I'm going to go slightly out of my core 13 um, paints I suggested last time um, and I will use um, a uh, bit of quick shade wash mixing medium so it's going to be about a two to one ratio um, this stuff will just help to um, thin out the uh, pigment of the, the wash when we apply it all over first of all it will look pretty mucky and terrible um, but if you can leave your model standing upright as this stuff um, sets it will flow with gravity Let's try and remove any um, big ugly splodges that are appearing on the flatter surfaces and just run the brush back over to do so. And around about 30 minutes of drying time is required now. Right, we're back. Um, our wash is dried and as you can see it's hugged uh, the folds on the cloth um, areas between um, the uh, musket and the body um, under the arms um, and details on the face have all been picked out by that wash um, so we'll look at a couple of um, ways to highlight and um, to finish the model off um, these are um, not 100% necessary steps, but I think for completeness we'll have a, a look. Um, we'll pick out the um, white of the straps, so we'll go back to our um, fully off white. It's got one of our smaller brushes. And let's just apply a bit towards the, the top. Going back over with the white of the raised upper areas, it's just going to add um, the effect of the light catching. And it will help to define things again where the wash might have um, made the colours a bit muddy. I wouldn't say we need to cover the whole strap by any stretch of the imagination. One or two points just help to, to pick it out. And we can do the straps um, on the packs as well. And why not a bit on the trousers as well. Areas that will be catching the light more than others. So the knees and the hem. 
any raised folds. So as well as highlighting with your um, base colour, um, you may want to take one of your base colours and lighten it a little. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of this elfic flesh and mix it in with our tan flesh. We already did a bit of dry brushing over the top with the um, elfic flesh earlier, which added a bit of a highlight. Um, but this will just really help us define our highlighted areas on the, the flesh. Um, noses, simple area to pick out. Cheeks. And chins on the face. These are all areas which are going to catch um, a bit more light. Mm, do a little on the knuckles as well. And you can even push the highlight even further, mix in a bit more of that elfic flesh. Just with little dots, use the side of the brush. There we have it, some really straightforward highlights there just to really put the finishing touches on, bring the model to life a bit. Um, I hope that's been a, a useful exercise in, in discussing the different um, techniques um, for painting. Um, there are Lots of situations where um, we can apply the, the different techniques and it varies model by model. Um, sculpts are different and that has an effect on what techniques will, will work best on them. But hopefully that's an overview for these uh, great coated troops. Um, be back next time to have a look at how we paint the models in the um, campaign dress uniforms um, without a great coat. Um, especially concentrating on the flank companies, the Voltagers and Grenadiers, who are a little bit different from the line fuse players. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.